Hello everybody and welcome to the 9-2 reveal. I just finished watching it. Oh, I'll wrap my thoughts up after you see it. Alright, here we go. The Shadowlands story pulls together threads that started in Warcraft 3 and wove their way through many of our expansions. And they're all so we deep in the like books and stuff that you'll never gets. know. Now, as the third and final act begins of the saga, we need to stop the Jailer from reaching his ultimate goal, which is to rewrite the rules of reality. Eternity's End serves as the final this, chapter of one book of the The Warcraft sad part saga. is I, I would never know that. I know he's the bad guy, but none of it's in the game. The Jailer has the advantage. He has seized the sigils of the leaders of the Four Covenants. We see Sylvanas realize that she's been a pawn in the Jailer's game this entire time. Which... And she refuses to serve him, and she's taken prisoner. The Jailer is able to open a portal to who knows where, taking Anduin with him. And the Primus had us take some time to retrieve some new sigils. Now we have gathered our forces. We are working with the Primus to open our own gateway to pursue the Jailer. I don't this really care about the story stuff. It's not even in the game. Like, who cares? I'm not trying to be pessimistic, the opens but a portal, and we come into it is what it is. Land. It's completely white, foggy. We're walking on water for some reason. They can only make out some shapes, some figures there. Some <laughs> this is the new zone. It's just a consoles. white Eventually fog. Eventually, you make your way to a giant <laughs> gate, and behind it lies Zareth Mortis. It what? Zareth I mean, it looks kind of cool. Created by the first ones and it is intended to create afterlives. Think of it as being tucked away in the fabric of the Shadowlands itself. It's kind of the behind the scenes of these afterlives we're that we journey to. It's Death's the land afterlife? where the progenitors, the first ones who created all of the realms of the Shadowlands, this is their workshop. They've created everything we've experienced in Azeroth and Shadowlands and even realms- We're we literally meeting these God. The first ones built the universe as far as we know but their intentions or methods are completely unknown. But of course, the jailer's presence here is disrupting this process. And we're working Don't mind us. To we're just trying to get rid of this dude. The jailer's forces and protect this place. Protect it. I think the artists have done a fantastic They're gods. Job. And I know they did a lot of research and they looked at a lot of real life examples of very strange places in the real world. As a team, we were really trying to make this place as alien as possible. So we really wanted to make which, everything which should look feel cool. completely unique. That just looks like different. reused assets Our from the ground. Our are floating. We have stones that are floating. We it's the ground. Massive forge of afterlives that is floating in the center of the zone. And true to that its looks name, cool. it's something it's that sphere, is but it kind looks of putting cool. together a new afterlife to be sent out into the Shadowlands. We have this water all around you because water is really the catalyst for any kind of creation. It's actually unlike any other water that, that we know before. of. This is actually water that we can walk on. It almost creates like a threshold between Sereth Mortis and some other kind of more primordial space right below it. Man. Everything you see in Sereth Mortis has a, a purpose. I really hope we see it. for us. It was really more important than to this. find ways to convey that intention in the environment itself. And one of the ways in which we did it was through this duality between a lush in a dry biome. In the dry biome, we see perhaps what the original look of the zone was when the progenitors were first establishing this workspace for themselves. And in the lush biome, we see the result of their experimentation with plant life. And it's a mixture of Negrand and, oh, what is the name of that zone? Tenaris? Yeah. From there, we started thinking about what kinds of creatures would be in this place that are fundamentally how, how could we How There's could we reuse here. assets? There's creatures that are building afterlives. <laughs> we tried to really stretch assets. and think what that might be like. <laughs> My personal favorite includes the giant armored snail. Let's and not we also forget. Have a progenitor chicken, which answers the question. Let's not forget. First. This is the God Zone. They created everything these first we're seeing. Ones who crafted Zareth Mortis? What they left behind? Why would they the make these meant things? to take care of the place and make sure that it fulfilled its function to create afterlives? The Automa have several different classes, and you can see this in their silhouettes. We have the builders. We have the protectors. We have the casters, and each one of them have a, a reused model yeah. within the Shadowlands. <laughs> and then you'll also discover the Jiro, which are a part of the Automa. They're a little more quirky. They have a little more personality. 
they are a little more sentient than the other Automa, so some of them even split off to pursue their own desires. What? Unfortunately, when we found our way in, devourers also found their way in. They are rabbits. Oh my god, how They're does this make any this weird sense? Energy and it's causing them to mutate and to fall uh... apart. And the Automa, where they are confronted by them, some of them are fighting them off. And so it's going to take some time for them to understand that we're here the, trying to help These gods them are intentionally weak and unable to deal with it purely for gameplay reasons, and that's so allies. stupid. There are some enlightened brokers here that we're going to be working with. But it's a broker that arrived here quite a long time ago and has had a change of heart from looking at the world as a very transactional place to seeing this place as a holy place, a sacred place. It doesn't matter. It we doesn't matter that you think that. Named they can't do anything. Farim needs our assistance. And, and for some reason, we've got to come in and deal with it. Haven, because they've got no backup plans, apparently. Ruins. And this is where the Enlightened <laughs> really have made their home. Haven serves as our foothold here, as well as use it as a base of operations and really start unlocking the mysteries. Does that mean they want us out of air or boats? Or is this going to be protecting and no bank, no auction house, but no nothing? So that way we still use or Bring his forces against the Atoma and tear up the land, and they are eager for assistance. The brokers themselves are very ostentatious. They're very is into this materialism. It? I'm going to be so mad, man. We're all. over half. They have relinquished this material way, and you'll see this reflected in their clothes. They're a little tattered. They're a little faded because it just isn't important to them anymore. They're just here for the pursuit of knowledge. A bunch of reused assets and stories that no one can follow anyway. When players arrive, they're kind of fishes out of water. And one of the first things that we have to do is start learning how to communicate with the Automa. Think of it as a kind of runic language. Why? Based in symbols. They're bond. gods. Small construct. It was pretty cute, actually. And with his assistance and the assistance of Farim, uh, we will learn eventually how to understand the symbols through the cipher of the first ones. We'll uncover different parts of this alphabet and start to learn more about the progenitors and their That's kind of cool. It will allow you to unlock new and different forms of content. So that can range from daily quests to new options on the vendors to places oh, to explore my God. new side quests rep. that open up. So it's really it's literally just rep grinding. To exploring Did you see how he explained rep forms. grinding? As we looked into the development of Cypher of the First Ones, we wanted something that was unique that players haven't seen before. A little bit of familiarity, but something that takes that to the next level. We really involved the whole team in Please this Please tell me process. there's something we else here. We worked with our UI team to be able to represent That's those. That's the same chest! Through, the through these things talking and seeing them on screen in chat bubbles. It just has glyphs a on it! Window. Little by little, these kind of runes start taking shape into words. Why are you making a big deal out of 9-2? Over the course Stop of it! Read the room! Down. Nothing here is worth the sharing! Speak in this kind of musical language. They don't talk the way that we mortals are used to speaking. The sound team was super excited. They jumped in. Yeah, uh, but they, they can't handle themselves. Prototyping all kinds of different sounds. We listened, we gave feedback. And we really ended up in Yay, a place. Yay, we made sounds. We did it, boys. We As hit the new content. There's new sounds. Unlocking the language. You'll be able to see those words that they're saying, but still hear those tones. Great. The Jailer's true goal has never really been to escape the Maw or to gain power. He's been focused on reaching this place called the Sepulchre, to go into this place of Oh, power, and there's the and new to really raid. Rewrite the rules of the universe. And let me guess, this is that the, the Jailer end. has breached the Sepulchre of the first one. Blizzard only cares about raids. Raid for eternity's end. It's very we're obvious. Gather our forces. We're very, very the obvious. Inside. Once you go inside the Sepulchre, there's some mind-blowing visuals. This is a place that should not be able to exist according to the laws of physics as we know them on Azeroth. Just looking out into this impossible sky of seeing these, these are all reused assets. The ones, those laws We've seen don't apply all to of this. Among you the just colored it different. The, curve, the first ones include the jailer's forces, maybe a dreadlord or two that you haven't tied up loose ends with. Uh, will face a consular. This is similar to a being like Algalon, Don't but the even. jailer's gotten to it and has infused his domination magic into the consular. Before we get I to the I thought he was going to compare it to Ulduar and I was going to be upset. First. Our hope is that we can learn whatever Anduin knows about domination magic. We need to be able to resist it or better yet, fight it. 
Oh, good tier sets. I mean, that's good for the PVE years. Time for the return of tier sets. Yes. Devs, we have two. No, you haven't. Shut the fuck up. Genitor magic golds and metals along with those classic this is good silhouettes this is the first good shamans, thing pointy things for rogues it's but gonna remember we're getting these back they were the taken from us back. this is something we're getting really them right back the story we're in the final act of the shadowlands saga Why are they gray? we're here literally on the brink at eternity's end and what and better no place color. to fully unleash the power of these classes and i think players will really enjoy the return of those class sets just as much as the team enjoyed making those look like greens those look like greens. How do you make something that is mystical and magical and incomprehensible and yet understandable? I think we've done a good job of finding that line. The team as a whole has been working so hard and we are so excited to get this out for everyone. We're gonna get new mounts, new pets. A bit horrifying for me, but exciting for some is the fact that, you know, some of the spider mounts can now fly. Who needs flying spiders? But that's also going to be a cool thing for people. We have updates to professions, to soul binds, to conduits. There's a new dancing mini game in Darkmoon Fair. I'm a story guy, so I'm super geeked about watching players kind of piece together those little lore tidbits. That's what excites me as well. I'm really looking forward to season three of Mythic Plus. Tazavesh is getting split into two dungeons. If you're a raider, if you chase Keystone Master, if you're an achievement collector, there's something for everyone to do in this. Shadowlands he didn't mention like PvP. the final chapter of one book of the Warcraft saga. And our team is already hard at work on the next Man. stories to come. Can't this, talk about them quite yet. I'm but when the time so is right, mad right, right now. I'm really excited to share them with you. This was an absolute waste of fucking time. No, I am not going to apologize for how angry I am about this. This is absolutely and utterly freaking ridiculous. That was nothing but a bunch of reskins recolored and you shoved it in our face and said, look how amazing this is. Do you not understand how the community feels about your game right now? Do you not understand that you need to make massive changes to mechanics, actually talk about the things people care about? PvP, for example, which you didn't even mention, but to be fair, I'm so fucking used to that at this point that... Why am I mad? That's the real question. Why am I even mad? Why do I still play? So as you can see, I'm not in a very good mood about it. I'm not very optimistic. Um... They gave us tier sets back. I think that's the only good thing I was able to pull out of the entire video. Um, the art team doing what they do best. But even still, it's just a bunch of reused assets. Um, they are going heavy, talking about the story, the jailer, and all that. That none of us really know anything about because it's not in the game. Um, and that was it. This was supposed to be a big patch for a lot of people. The too long didn't read is that the game's not in a great state. A lot of people are unhappy with it. A lot of people don't think that Blizzard has... They, they've lost all faith in Blizzard. They think they're incompetent. And I see where it comes from. Blizzard continuing to not be able to read the room continuing to do what they do best and ignore absolutely everyone but themselves. If you like raiding, I, I mean, I guess you should be happy. You're getting a new raid. No one's surprised. You're getting tier sets back, which isn't a win because remember, they stole that from you. You're just getting it back. Um, PVPers told to get fucked again. No surprise there. I'm I'm just so disappointed.